Hi, I'm Robert Shaw, coming from Texas Lutheran University in a small city called Seguin in Texas. Um, and uh, I come from Tanzania, so I'm originally from Tanzania, Eastern Africa. Can everybody hear me? A little, a little louder. My name is Robert Shaw, and I come from Texas Lutheran University in Seguin, Texas. Uh, so if, if you haven't been in Texas, so please come by, so close to San Antonio, why not, uh, and say hello to us. Originally, I'm from Tanzania, and uh, at Texas Lutheran University, I am teaching information systems, as well as supporting faculty using technology. So I get to work with faculty quite a bit, uh, repackaging uh, their classes and so forth, restructuring their classes for both blended and online. A little bit of background here. TLU, uh, we are at the infancy stage as far as online education and uh, blended learning. So when I had someone saying that we feel like we're behind, I think we're, we're, we're very behind. We are just pretty much starting to see how we can adapt it. And there's no option since uh, we know that we, some of our students would like to pursue classes with us, especially summer classes with us. But if we don't offer those, then they ought to take it somewhere else. And they come and talk to us and say, hey, if you have it, I'll take it. You don't have it, I'll go somewhere else. We don't want to lose that. And at the same time, uh, from the, uh, based on the revenue, I mean, you, you're losing revenue. So you're thinking about losing the revenue and why not? So what we've been, what they've done so far is uh, studying this summer and also in the fall is to start offering blended classes as well as online classes. But they did ask faculty members voluntarily to decide if they want to offer those uh, blended and uh, online classes. So there was no uh, pushy as far as uh, being required to, but rather if you feel like you want to do that, go for it. And the uh, institution is providing support for faculty. That's why coming and training faculty because it's very difficult when you ask faculty to repackage, redesign their classes from pure traditional approach to online. And, uh, and usually it takes a lot of training, and that's what we've been doing so far. Uh, since the beginning of our uh, spring semester till this time, training, working with faculty, so, sometimes one-on-one, uh, -on -one, sometimes in group, try to repackage their ideas, their experts but when it comes to online teaching, it's very different, and uh, that what has been done so far. So, with that in mind, I also have taught for DeVry University. Have you heard of DeVry University? DeVry University, they're very big on online education, and uh, they have an eight-week session. Usually, that's, that's the system, eight-week session, and they use blended approach. So, what they mean by that is uh, one day, they meet on campus, and then the rest it's online. That's what I do. So only one day they have to meet, students have to meet on campus, and the rest is online. And they're very heavy on online discussions. Very heavy on that. Now, if you take the same concept, when you come to TLU as a blended and online, really, uh, it's more of uh, how you, students will come to class almost, you know, twice a, twice a week or three times a week, depends on how the schedule looks like, but also there's a component that involves uh, videos and other technologies embedded to that. So that's a little bit of a different approach as far as uh, blended, not only once a week, but maybe two or three times, and continue as, as usual. So online learning and, of course, teacher led approach. Well, maybe before I share with you is this, some of the issues personally, personally I faced from teaching information systems is this. Most of my students, when they show up, they are least prepared for what is going to be taught today or maybe uh, what will be covered uh, even the next day. Completely less prepared for that, okay? So I saw that, I observed that and I saw that. I said, well, I guess something needs to be done about this. And at the same time too, when you, when you are teaching them, you cover a certain concept about information systems, very, preliminary stages of information systems about computers, they appear not to understand it completely. Perception here is, well, students are very computer savvy. They are not. I can tell you they are not. I can tell you that. Even sometimes when discuss among faculty, they think students know a lot about computers. That's not true. That's not true at all. 
And uh, definitely you can see that when you ask very simple questions to students, they have no clue about it. So we have to cover those up front. It takes a lot of time, limited, only 15 minutes or maybe sometimes 60 minutes. So there's a time limitation as far as how much time you can spend with your students. Just intro concepts to your students, not even getting deeper into trying to apply what they're learning. It's not there. So some of the limitations that uh, I also uh, face is uh, going through. I don't know about your students. My students don't read textbooks. Maybe you was do read textbooks, more power to you. Share with me the secret. <laughs> okay, that would be really great. But most of my students don't read the textbooks. Some do, majority don't at all. So with, with that in mind, and uh, so what I said here is, in addition to that, in addition to all that, I think the extracurricular activities, how about that? You know, if we have that. What do you do when you are not in class? We have a lot of students involved in sports, where they are representing the university. Very legitimate excuses for not being in class. But you cover the material, you try your level best, and they yet, when they come back, they struggle. Or they come and ask for your, more of your time to cover what you've covered before. Um, it could be very generous to do that. I try to, but then overstretched. I can't. So the idea here is how can we tailor these students? How do we respond to such a uh, situation? Here we go. So I started thinking about applying this model here, which of course we know the founders here, Jonathan and Beckman. Jonathan Beckman and Aaron Sams, 2007. That's where the whole concept of blended uh, flip classroom started. Those are the ones. And they were facing the same idea too that most of their students they did miss, especially evening classes due to extracurricular activities. They were not there. And they said, well, how could we share uh, this learning experience with our students um, uh, to the point that we can also uh, tailor to their situation? So we have technology, great. We have videos, great. Can we also show some demonstrations? Yes. How about lectures? Yes, we can do that. And, uh, and so, so they started with a vague idea of just using flip, using videos, just to reinforce that. That's where it got started. And I, I kind of thought, well, probably this also would be a good approach for my class as well. So the whole idea here is we want students to acquire knowledge before they get to class. How could they acquire that knowledge before they get to class? Of course, you flip it. You require them to view some videos if you have or some PowerPoints, if you have, whatever they have to do online before they get to class, acquire that knowledge. And when they come to college, when they come to class, then they have to apply the knowledge, whatever minimal knowledge they've acquired, to apply that in class, maybe in groups, group discussions, case studies, for that case. I love to spend more time doing case studies where I'm limited if I have to cover the whole lecture theme first, and that less time on case studies. So applying the knowledge, and then eventually out of class to reinforce what they learned. So with the video-based flip approach is, sure, I could be here, just like we're all here, listening to me. Sometimes very boring, right? That's how it happens. Sometimes I don't get it, you know? And uh, sometimes, is it possible I could review what we covered in class? It's very possible. Those key concepts that I want students to do that. And sure, they can reinforce those key concepts outside of class since they're out there anywhere, any place, unlimited. That's the whole idea. So I kind of thought, well, that would be a good thing to, uh, to do. Well, I teach information systems. I'm going to give an example of Chapter 3, Software. Tools for Productivity and Creativity. Chapter 3. Well, TLU, we have a course management system called uh, Eraser. Uh, this, this is Eraser is a uh, part of Zanzibar. Have you heard of Zanzibar? Zanzibar is uh, just an enterprise system, Zanzibar. And one of the module components is an Eraser, which works just like Blackboard. The whole idea, like Blackboard or uh, Desire to Learn or e learning and so forth. And here is my course on Eraser uh, how it looks like, where I have the uh, handouts and several links that we put out there for students to review some of those links are video based for that case and uh, there's a number of areas also for the coursework and gradebook and everything else 
including communication with your students, just, just the way the course management system works. Now, I'm going to break it down to the course summary. We have a number of chapters in there, pretty much all the chapters to be covered. A number of quizzes, pretty much every chapter has a quiz, one or two. A number of exams as well. There are research projects for the, um, for the class. There's oral presentation as well, part of the assignment for the students. And eventually have the uh, final exam. Break it further, quizzes. So here's an example of quiz for chapter three. The students have to take this quiz before <coughs> chapter three has been covered. So before we come and talk about chapter three, students will take that quiz online. Now, I have no idea how they're gonna approach this, but my assumption is they have no idea about chapter three. But I am requiring or forcing them at least to get some ideas to read, to prepare for it for chapter three. When we come to class and talk about it. Here's a further breakdown of some of the, uh, uh, this is one of the question in the quiz, sample question. Dash is a software that has been developed to solve a particular problem for users. So they have to think of what is that dash. By clicking on the video and watch the video, they should be able to find an answer to that. So it comes with the idea what somebody was talking about here, how you blend those uh, uh, questions or quizzes and also there's a video component to that. And they uh, watch the video and be able to find the answers to that. So this is part of the quiz. Another sample, a bike represents what? You watch the video first and hopefully you can find an answer there. And I find that most students benefit from that. This is nothing from me, it's all from what has been prepared already out there. And here is SSD and HDD. What's the difference and describe about it? They watch the video and they can write about it, part of describing it. And the same thing too, the concept for the CPU speed, the video they watch and eventually they're able to write their answers. And here is the analysis of that quiz. Let's see here, they had 21 students, and then of course uh, the time used, they have a student that took only 15 minutes to finish that. Another one, more than that, okay. And of course the breakdown of their performance and so forth. Well, I can see here, low score, 70% was the first, was the same student that really took about 15 <laughs> minutes to complete that. I don't know what it says about that, but that's what's interesting to see that. And also breakdown of their performance. That's for A's, B's, and C's, and so forth. I found this to be uh, very, very helpful because when we met, when we meet in class, I don't cover that thing anymore. Rather, we apply the knowledge and gain from uh, watching the video or taking the quizzes before that time. So we, I engage more on discovering the issues that they had questions for me or they had questions for other group members. And we went on those key, key questions or key issues that they needed to know the most and not the, uh, the ones that they've been already covered. So, connecting with the Bloom's taxonomy, definitely hoping that they can remember some definitions, they can understand the concept, and eventually apply. So that's what the basic approach, and that's a good that. I found there's more deeper learning from students, and of course more engagement, since they came in with uh, some expectation that, you know what, uh, we're going to apply this knowledge and helping each other. There's a more interaction, uh, interaction engagement. And of course, the feedback, the areas that they're struggling most. It wasn't, it wasn't longer a surprise, a surprise to me because I was used to lecture and they did quizzes and I find out, you know what, they flagged. So something is missing here. So it's no longer a surprise to me, rather is, okay, let's discuss those issues that needs to be discussed deeper. We use continuous relay or screen cast automatic. Anybody else has have you? Yeah, this is really cool because you can create your questions and also embed video, and at the same time also can give you some other um, analysis of performance for your students for each person and also for the entire quiz. So it's very very interesting as, as well as continuous relay right now. If you think the updated version, it does the same thing as well. So it's very. very uh, um, I guess the rest is just the do's and don'ts for making those engaging flipping videos, as you can see there. If you're using a built-in microphone, sometimes it doesn't come out right, so there are type of microphones that are really good for you uh, for that case, for the presentation, and the number of things that can be checked out to make sure it comes up very nicely. 
uh, and also have a number of views for making uh, good videos. We are very good at this, maybe, and making videos, but how about a scripting? So that was very interesting when you're thinking of uh, some kind of a disability issues. Some, we need to have both, both uh, um, you know, resources together. You get the videos, but also a script for that case. It's very helpful to have those, to remember to have those. Um, and of course, for me, but I was just sharing with you my approach and uh, what I think uh, I'm planning to do for the fall semester uh, to continue with it and hopefully also inspire more faculty members to do that. Again, it's a piloting you know, approach for us at TLU, but we hope this is the way, the way to go. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, you, know, you mentioned you use a script. Do you, you write out exactly what you're going to say? Do you have something that records your voice and, and write the script for you? I do both. Okay. I do both. That's either writing on a PowerPoint for that case or uh, just uh, pretty much you know, narrating the, on a PowerPoint. But I, I'm saying, you, you help me provide a script to the students. Do you have to record what you're saying and write that script or, for you, or, or is that you understand my question? Yes, I understand. What well, exactly? If uh, if I'm saying something or recording something, I also write exactly what I'm saying. Oh, so yes. you're writing. You're not using Dragon or something. No, I'm writing. Yeah. Yeah. Do the students see the script, or are they just listen? Uh, they, they see the script, they see, yes, they, they see. Yeah. because we have those, uh, you know, people with uh, different disability issues, they say, you know what, I can't even see the video. So we are all for video, but not everybody can watch video. So what else? I can hear, so what else? So think of different options, how to accommodate that as well. Questions for any of the speakers? Any more questions? Yes. So, so sorry we just started hammering on the script thing. But um, do you have students told you that they end up rereading the script to get something that they were having difficulty in? Not, not most of them. Not most, most of them will go for videos. Most of them will go for videos, yeah. And even when uh, preparation for the final exams and that kind of thing, when I tell them, hey, review uh, the previous uh, quizzes that we've done, they find it very easy to, to do that. In case they missed classes or they were there but they didn't get it, they can reinforce or try to catch up using those, uh, you know, video based questions. Yeah. Any other person, maybe? Do you use the quiz results as a basis for preparing lecture or is that just for... I use the quiz results as a basis for finding out areas that needs more help. Yeah, because if I find that even after all of this, he is in, he's in maybe one of the one or two courses that's where more students felt that's exactly where I tried to have it. Yeah. Any other question maybe for the rest of the presenters or so? Yes, sir. Well, I think uh, it's for two of you. So if you're doing an online course and you have some component where you're also either either you're meeting with them in person mm -hmm. or they're not, I'd like to hear more about your reflections about how important that is, that, that first day or that first week or Yes. Any online course, and I always tell my faculty members, you are the best in your, in your field, right? But if students miss the first class or the second or third class, it's going to be very hard for them to catch up. So the preparation for the first or second or third class is very important to cover the overall picture of how this class is laid out, what is expected of them, so they are familiar with the way the class is laid out. If they miss that, it's very difficult for them to catch up. That has been my experience with most of my students. That's the big difference between here's just only face to face where there's a room for catching up, but online is very difficult, especially for summer courses where it's only four week course, very compact. So you miss three days, you're completely lost. You cannot catch up on that. So that prior preparation, uh, first, second, third, or maybe even the fourth day, make sure everybody is there. It's very important to understand how the class is When you say out. there, you mean online there? To, to be online, yeah. exactly. To be present, to be present. Online. I'm, I'm wondering more the face-to-face -face component of it. Is that important or not? Um, yes. I, just a comment. Um, I asked, you know, we did the one class at the beginning and one at the end. Right. And I asked people in my, uh, in, in my survey at the end, um, what they thought about that. Um, one person said they needed a class in the, this is out of 20, one person said they needed a class in the middle of the semester. Two people said they didn't need either of those classes at all, and everybody else seemed quite happy with it. 
So I think it's a real personal mm -hmm. feeling. Some people just have that comfort level that, right. that they need to be there attached to campus, and some people don't. However, I also feel, as human, you know, being present and, and looking at you, you're looking at me, that is, that it cannot be replaced. There's no way we can replace that. We have all the tools out there we could do that, but there is a very, it's very important how we feel and how we approach each other in person, face to face. And some people learn better that way. We're very comfortable that way, but when you twist it, it's a little different for majority of us. Yes. If I could add in here, so we, um, um, when in our accelerated studies for adults program, we teach hybrid or online courses. Although we don't have the first face-to-face -face meetings, we require, typically require the professors to make a personal phone call to every student in the week before classes begin. And I think especially with student populations who maybe are um, less, you know, prepared or con less confident learners or maybe, you know, that, that so if you can't do the face-to-face, -face, at least having the phone call makes a little bit of that personal connection yes. with the professor, which helps you be able to make contact again if something goes wrong mm -hmm. later on in the semester, or you know, even just emailing about course content. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's true.